Hippolo Uno. So here, example one, we're talking about the average healing time of a certain type of incision. So this is kind of one of those things like when a doctor comes and tells you, well, you're going to, it's going to take about six to eight weeks for your sprained toe or whatever, or knee or whatever, or something like to be healed. So with that, that's kind of like what, what this comes from, that what that comes from, like our normal distribution and our normal curve and all that good stuff. That's where they get that from. That's where doctors get that from. They've worked this stuff out and they figured out, okay, well, from this time to this time, this works, or this time to this time. So that's what we're talking about here. So the average healing time of a certain type of incision in is 240 hours with a standard deviation of 20 hours. Sketch a normal curve that represents the frequency of healing times. Okay, so before we do any work, they say average. And when we talk about average, is that our like mean, mode, median, all that stuff? What? Average is the mean. So that means here it says the average healing time is 240. So that means here 240 is going to be our mean. Average is mean. Then they say standard deviation is 20 hours. So they gave you exactly what you needed. Standard deviation is 20. And then our mean is here. So with that, the first thing before we actually make our graph, the actual um, um, bell-shaped curve itself, is that's what we're looking at doing here. We're going to find the values defined by the standard deviation in a normal distribution. So in other words, we're going to pretty much, I'm going to go back to this here. In other words, we're going to find these numbers right here. We're going to find these values. So first off, let's go ahead and deal with that. We know again, our mean is 240. We know our standard deviation is 20. So we're going to have to deal with One standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations, one, two, and three again with our mean. So we're going to do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to give a little space here. Make sure I don't go too far. So here we're going to do uh, one standard deviation. And again, this is not a zero. That's standard deviation. For some reason, every year people don't pay attention to that. That's not a zero. I don't understand why they do that. I'm so lost by it. Oh, every year I'm lost. But pay attention. Just make sure you know this is not a zero. Standard deviation. It's a standard deviation sign. So we do one here, positive one and negative one. And all we're going to do is fill the values in and find our numbers. So we know the standard deviation for the, the mean for each one of these, sorry, is 240. So we put that for each one of these, 240 first. All right, for this side, we do all subtraction signs. And then for all of these, we do addition signs. Addition. Okay. And then here we do one standard deviation. And standard deviation is 20. And then that's two standard deviations. And then three standard deviations. And again, one standard deviation two standard deviations, and then three standard deviations. And all we're going to do last is put each one of these in the calculator and find your answer. So for our first one, you should get 220. You put all that in the calculator. For our second one there, you should get 200. Here you should get 180. Then over here, we're going to add that together. And so that gives us 260. This gives us 280. 
This gives us 300. Okay, so not hard. We just put the values for st uh, mean and standard deviation, put them in, it didn't work them out. All right, the next part is now putting that on the actual um, st um, normal curve. So here we're going to sketch the general shape of the normal curve and then replace the horizontal scale by the values in cal that we calculated. So in other words, instead of putting these down on the, um, the number, on the number line, we're going to put these numbers down on the number line. So here, I'm going to, so here, that's what we did. So we put these numbers down. And again, if you noticed it, we put it in numerical order. So we took the 180 and put that first. Then we put the 200 and put that second. Then we took the 220 and we put that here. We put our mean right here in the middle. Remember, mean's always in the middle, and that's what I gave you at the very beginning. Our mean was 240, so that's what we put right here in the middle. Then we put 260, sorry, 260, 280, and then 300. We put all that down here in numerical order. So all the numbers we found, we put in numerical order. All right, and then the last thing is doing our bell shape curve and making sure that the top of the bell or top of that curve is at the mean, that's the highest. Then everything else starts coming back down. Oops. Let's do that a little bit better. Oh, that's even worse. Huh, huh. Something like that. So not perfect, but something like that. And that's our bell-shaped curve. So you need it, you will need to find these values here, like we just did. Just like we did right up here. We found those values. And then you're going to have to do the bell-shaped curve. And then that's it. One other thing to add here. If we look at it, we say this was the mean minus one standard deviation. And this was the mean plus one standard deviation. So here, this whole range is considered just one standard deviation. From here to here, this is considered two standard deviations. And then from here to here, it's considered three standard deviations. Now, after you do the practice, you're going to find out that there's actually a percent that goes here with one standard deviation, a percent for this one, a percent for this one. And again, you're going to have to know those because they're not going to give it to you in the final exam. But they're quick and easy. There's only three percents there to know. And you should be good. All right, that's it.